When I was little, my father was famous. He was the greatest samurai in the empire. He cut off the heads of 131. Hey everybody, Jerry Williams, aka Greater Sapien here. Thanks for stopping by. Today we're looking at a couple more moon claims from Dubai's 200 proofs, Earth is not a spinning ball. Number 136. Many people think that modern astronomy, <laughs> modern astronomy's ability to accurately predict lunar and solar eclipses is a result and proof positive of the heliocentric theory of the universe. The fact of the matter, however, is that eclipses have been accurately predicted by cultures worldwide for thousands of years before the heliocentric ball Earth was even a glimmer in Copernicus's imagination. Ptolemy in the first century AD accurately predicted eclipses for 600 years on the basis of a flat stationary Earth with equal precision as anyone living today. All the way back in 600 BC, Thales accurately predicted an eclipse which ended the war between the Meds and the Lydians. Eclipses happen regularly with precision in 18 year cycles. So regardless of geocentric or heliocentric, flat or globe Earth cosmologies, eclipses can be accurately calculated independent of such factors. So, I'm not gonna spend a lot of time on this because I've mentioned it many times that even though solar and lunar eclipses are cyclic and thus follow a predictable pattern as to their timing, what these prediction patterns cannot tell you is the precise time of the eclipse, only the day around which it will occur. And for solar eclipses, the pattern cannot tell you where on the planet it will be visible or for how long. Remember, for a model to take the lead, it has to be able to explain what we observe better than the other models. And the globe model explains eclipses better and more accurately. But I'm not going to spend more time on this because this isn't a claim against the globe model, even though it's supposed to be a proof the Earth is not a spinning ball. He says right there, regardless of geocentric or heliocentric flat or globe Earth cosmologies, so this isn't a knock against the globe at all. It's a weak attempt to support the flat Earth, but it fails to do so. A challenge to any flat Earther who claims a flat Earth model can predict solar eclipses as well as the accepted solar system model. Do it. Predict the next few solar eclipses without the aid of the globe-based data down to the minute, their visibility paths over the Earth and the regions that will experience them. And don't forget to show your work. Number 137. Another assumption and supposed proof of Earth's shape, heliocentric Heliocentrists claim that lunar eclipses are caused by the shadow of the ball Earth occulting the moon. They claim the sun, Earth, and moon spheres perfectly align like three billiard balls in a row so that the sun's light casts the Earth's shadow into the, onto the moon. Unfortunately for heliocentrists, this explanation is rendered completely invalid due to the fact that so lunar eclipses have happened and continue to happen regularly when both the sun and moon are still visible together above the horizon. For the sun's light to be casting Earth's shadow onto the moon, the three bodies must be aligned in a straight 180-degree syzygy. But as early as the time of Pliny, there are records of lunar eclipses happening while both the sun and moon are visible in the sky. Therefore, the eclipsor of the moon cannot be the Earth's shadow and some other explanation must be sought. No, the current explanation works perfectly. You see, I know that globe deniers like to try and isolate different pieces of the modern understanding in order to undermine them individually, and to the uninformed, the arguments might make sense. For example, in this case, Dubé and globe deniers want to treat the Earth like a naked object in space by ignoring the existence of the Earth's atmosphere. If the Earth was just a naked rock in space, then this argument would have some validity. But that is not the case. 
We know through repeated observations that the sun and moon appear higher above the horizon than their actual positions for a time as they rise and set due to the refraction of the atmosphere. I was looking for an online, uh, an image online to use as a diagram and I found this one, which I'm sure many of you have seen before. The only thing I don't like about this one is the scale because it makes it seem like there's a tremendous amount of refraction going on. But when you look at it at scale, you can see that the refraction doesn't need to be very much to have this visibility occur. So our model explains it just fine, Mr. Dubay. Meanwhile, the model you promote can't even explain a solar eclipse at all. Now, for some of you, globe deniers admit that the moon goes in front of the sun. I get that, but you still have the moon and sun as local and near one another. That doesn't explain why the shadow appears the way it does. Those of you who think the sun is being projected onto the sky can't explain the difference in visibility across the Earth. And if you think that the moon is partially transparent like Eric here, well, the moon will never be able to eclipse the sun because the sun would shine right through it. Man, I'd say it's almost like you didn't think these through, but of course you didn't think these things through. Planet to even challenge me. Maybe you came by to congratulate me on last night's victory.